sign on to letters agreeing to get us a meeting with the president, the president who's not here today, who hasn't been here for at least the majority of the year so far. He's been out in D.C. flying around on your dime, flying around on your tuition, your fees, the state taxes, doing whatever he can do. And what has he gotten us? Nothing. We've gotten higher fees, less classes. What is all that lobbying doing for us? Nothing. But what did we do on March 1st? We stood up, we took to the ground, we took to the streets, and we took over our universities. And you know what we did? We put people power, people's collective power, into action. And we did it around specific demands. We did it around demands that were not only related R to this a. school, but we had a future plan that was going to be Can for, I see for, R in a. General, for California in general. But what really got us going, what really made the difference on this campus, were the demands that we had, were the March 1st demands for Cal State see. LA. I'm going to read over them. We're seeing people like faculty, we're seeing the staff, the custodial workers on this campus stay here for years, decades, without seeing a dime in raises, without seeing a dime. And yet at the same time, the CSUs as a whole are implementing rules and regulations to make sure, to make sure that not only do the presidents of these campuses get a raise every time that they switch over, but that they can get any amount of private funding to go into their salaries as well. That means that corporations, that businesses like Pepsi, like some of the other businesses that you see on this campus, can just shove money into our president's pocket and make him do whatever they want him to do, not what the students want him to do. So we're gonna also ask for, for allocating additional resources for the undocumented, for parents, for veterans, and for the disabled. The groups that are on this campus that are affected most by this crisis, that are affected most by the budget cuts, and that are continually marginalized. We're gonna fight for them, and we're gonna make sure that this campus stays as a symbol of, for what this campus has been in the past. For people, for people to come here and get a free quality education that actually reflects their culture, reflects their history, and reflects the place in society where they come from. On 
the same on the same page as that. We're gonna say that there's no targeting, no targeting when we're when when these people are putting in the budget cuts. No targeting of ethnic studies classes. No targeting of of arts classes. No targeting of the programs that we need and love and need to survive. That goes in specifically with another demand that we have, that race, class, and gender, or in other words, some people know it as PAS 180, is, ta is, taken, is not taken out of the Summer Bridge program. That it's left there for the students that need it, that need to get into this school, that don't have the ability otherwise, and aren't going to be able to learn about where they came from, and how to interact, and how to have a critical mindset about our education and our society that we all need to have. Keep race, class, and gender in Summer Bridge. Now I want, I want our administration not only to take their own pay cut, but I want them to see what's going on throughout the system and for them to publicly denounce executive salary increases and private contributions to all of the executives, to the people all throughout the system, to the Cal States, the CSUs, the UCs. And we want, to, we want them to publicly denounce the statewide budget cuts and the fee hikes in general. This is something that we have to stand up and make our voices heard with. We, made, we gave a manifesto to the president, something that the president of Fullerton College signed, which said that, that education is a sacred trust. Well, we believe it's a sacred trust. We also think it's a human right. right. And we, wanted to, we want the president to sign that. And if he signs that, it's going to hold him accountable to, the, to not making the same kind of drastic cuts that he's doing right now. Does he, has he signed it yet? No. He doesn't even want to show our faces. We saw him on campus for the first time the other day, and he saw us out here flyering and walking around, and he did nothing but put his head down and sprinted almost to the other side of campus so that he couldn't be heard or seen. That's President Rosser. Right now, the last, the last, and, and and most important at this at this juncture right now that we're at in in the quarter uh, demand that's affecting people right now that we that that we're addressing is the statewide enrollment freeze. The fact that classes are sitting there with 15, 16 people open or 16 open seats, and they're still professors are still being forced by the administration to turn students away, to send them home, to make them go get refunds from the financial aid that they were given, to send to send them into the nightmare of the bureaucracy and trying to do that. We've seen what it can do to students. We've seen how it's going to push them out. We've seen the people that are sitting here for at least six years, and that's if they're able to get their classes all the time. Right? It's going to be 12 years. Most people, it's even going to be two years because it's going to be two years and then they got to leave. If that, they can't even stay here for the whole time. So we're going to address the statewide enrollment freeze and we're going to say open up classes. Open up the seats now. How y'all doing today? Good. All right. All right. I can't hear you. I need I need I need y'all to get loud so we can all get hyped up. How y'all doing today? All right. Okay. All right. All right. Like like my brother Josh was saying, um, one of our demands is to keep race, class, and gender 180 in the Summer Bridge program. All right. Okay. Yeah. Clap it up. Clap it up for Summer Bridge. Race class and gender 180 is a um, is a is a course in Summer Bridge that allows students and helps students enhance their critical thinking skills and social awareness. Um, the students in the Summer Bridge program come from uh, misrepresented um, or disenfranchised uh, communities and stuff like that, and they need to have the social awareness. The current director, Becky Hopkins, she's trying to remove the the 180 course out of the summer bridge program and let the students take it in the fall winter and spring 
But what, what she and other people fail to realize is this is a transitional program. So they need, they need classes like uh, race class and gender 180 to be in the summer so they'll be prepared to take them in the fall, winter, and spring. You guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. The part that alarms us is she has not given us any, I repeat, any type of data, stats, or anything saying that the 180 course is the reason why students are not remediating. Let me, let me back up a little, get, a little bit. She, she wants to remove the class because the students, you guys know what Executive Order 665 is, right? You guys don't know what Executive Order 665 is? Okay, you guys all know your first year, well, yeah, your first year, you have to pass your remedial English and math classes, right? right. Math 89, 90, 91, English 95, 96. If you don't pass those courses within your first four quarters, you have to go, you get kicked out to school, you have to go to community college. So I believe last year, 60 to 70 students, um, Summer Bridge students, they, they, they got dropped out due to 665, Executive Order 665, but they're blaming it on the 180 course. So uh, we really think it's unjust until we get some type of, you know, some type of um, data, any type of evidence, we want the class to stay in the summer. It's very vital and important. And if it's removed, it will be detrimental to the program as a whole. What's up? Before I start talking about something, let me turn you guys' direction to our fine correctional officers up on top of the room. Hey, you guys! Look at that! Thanks for showing up! Yeah, just so you guys are aware that you're under surveillance. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, I mean, think about this campus. Think about the demographics. Of There's at least one cop on every roof of every building on campus right now. You go to UCLA, you go to, uh, what was that? Red, we're very colorful, just like colorful. You know, one of the younger students said, you know, he wanted a rainbow. He didn't want to see no concrete. We, I see some concrete here. We want a larger crowd than that. There's a, a great you know, ethnic right. um, diversity here. But still, we got, you know, we got some heads out here. We got some people that are looking to make a change. Now, what I'm going to address is the enrollment freeze. How many of you guys got to all your classes this quarter? How many people were not able to add a class that they needed this quarter? Yeah. I most think everyone, most people, people, not everyone, not most people are raising their hands. Add a class. I do, right here. How many not you everybody. guys? Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys were dropped out of a class in spring break? I was. <laughs> <laughs> And they had to hustle, come back, and then you had a professor tell you to your face, he can't, he or she can't add when there's five empty seats, right. ten empty seats, fifteen empty seats. Right. So how many of you guys know why why this is happening? Nobody. Two people. <laughs> What's happening? A lot of a lot of this is being attributed to the provost. Why? Yes, the provost, Ashish Vadia. How many of you guys know who the provost is? He he came out here March first. You guys you know, seen his picture, you seen his picture. Yeah, he's been around. He's a good guy. You know, I, I, I like him as a person, but not necessarily <laughs> him, him as, a, as a provost. You know, I don't believe, as much, you know, I, I, well, okay, yeah, true. <laughs> but also, this enrollment freeze is system-wide. It's not just our campus. It transcends Cal State LA, and it even transcends the chancellor's office. It goes, all, it stretches back to Governor Brown and, you know, eventually to the federal budget. They keep cutting money from education. So now, you know, the over-enrollment thing, they say we're over-enrolled. It's not because we have over 20,000 students on Cal State LA. It's not because there was a huge influx of students that just suddenly came in in spring quarter. No, we, we have the same 18,000 to, to 20,000 students that we've always had on this campus. The problem is they keep cutting classes. So now they ain't got enough room for all of us. So now guess how they doing this? They can't afford, they cannot go over 103% enrollment. Right now we're like a, at 102.55 something, so they're getting nervous. So now they're only letting a few people in like graduating seniors, because they want you guys out of here. You know, they want to they increase the, um, the graduation rate. They want to improve it. So what's going on 
is they're not counting you by heads. They're not counting Jelani, Gabriel, Adal. They're counting you by units. So now it's the same systematic practice of commoditizing human beings. So three people, three individuals can have 16 units, but that's, that could be counted as five people because 12 units is a full-time student. That's what's going on. Does that make things a little bit clearer for you guys? Somewhat. Somewhat. Say, I'm a human, not a commodity. 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 So if you guys haven't noticed, I don't know if you noticed since you know since you're in kindergarten all the way up till now, the school curriculum is not geared to generate critical thinkers. I want you to think. They want you to comply. They want you to to acquiesce to the existing system. They want you to keep doing what you're doing every day so that you don't break the rules and raise hell. Like I said, I'm a part of ASI. I'm actually supposed to be at a board meeting right now, but I thought this was more important. What's, what's going on? We've exhausted our diplomatic means. We voted at the board of directors no to student success fee. We said we don't want that unanimously. We said we don't want uh, elimination of Pan-African Studies 180. We don't want that eliminated. Student Fee Policy Committee voted no. We recommend that you do not implement this fee because it is not, I mean, think about this. Think about the people that have dropped out of college. Did they drop out because they said, oh man, I couldn't get that advising, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I couldn't get advising, so I dropped out of college. No, it's because I, I couldn't get the class or, you know, I couldn't afford it. And what are they doing? They keep cutting classes. Now, it's, now we have to compete amongst each other. And they're raising tuition. Raising tuition and cutting classes. How is that going to help me succeed? How is that going to help We now have succeed? three officers on top of the it's building not, over there. It's not built for you to succeed. <laughs> See, there's a secret, and the secret is this. If you fail, the federal government pays the money anyway. They get to keep it, you're out of school. If you paid your tuition, you don't get a piece of paper, oh, oh well, bye bye to your two years. That's how they treat you. Are they rich? You say they are rich. Are they Yes. It's already raised. It's going up 10%. The Board of Trustees, yes, they vote. Someone asked if they're raising tuition this summer. It's, it's going yes. up 10%. So, you know, the student success fee, that's some, that's nothing. $80, they're trying to implement new fees. What you guys don't know is that budget is not stagnant. They can tell you that $80 is going here. They can tell you that $90 is going here, but it doesn't necessarily have to stay that way next year. So, like I was saying, we exhausted our diplomatic means. They looked at it, Rasha looked at our recommendation and said, Oh well, I will. I don't care. So what? What weight? What political weight does ASI hold? What political weight does these committees hold? None. <laughs> Absolutely none when it comes to administrative decisions. That's why we're trying to organize, you know, a handful of us coalition members to get you guys to sacrifice your time, your energy, so that you know he he's going to ignore a couple committee decisions, but I. You know, I, I'm going to tell you for damn sure he's not going to ignore a thousand students at his front door. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's yelling, when, when are we going? What do y'all want to do? Where do we and you guys want to go right now? Yeah. What do you guys want to do? Right now. Yeah. do it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the provost is not at the office. Conveniently, neither is the president, nor is the vice president for administration. Oh, I mean, uh, student affairs, I'm sorry, student affairs. <laughs> Do y'all know where the provost and the president and the chancellor will be? All at one time in one space? At the Board of Trustees meeting. Who knows where the Board of Trustees meetings are? Long Beach. Long Beach. That's where you need to be. If you want to see the presidents of the college, you want to see the chancellor, that's where you need to be at the Board of Trustees meeting every month. It's every month, every two months.
fund a petition saying, look, there's other ways that you can fund education. There's other ways that you can allocate the funds, right? The deficit doesn't have to be as traumatic as it seems. You can cut car allowances. You can cut housing allowances. You can treat faculty well. You can be fair to the students, okay? So when we do these petitions and when we do these meetings, we're trying to be diplomatic with them. We don't have to do the direct action, right? So we've exhausted that. So then when, that's us asking. And then ASI will, will go ahead and, and put out a resolution saying no. Don't implement the student success fee. That's us telling them. No, we don't want this fee. We don't need this fee. We're essentially trying, you're trying to make us pay extra for something that we're supposed to get already. We're right. supposed to have advisement already. We're supposed to have counselors already. And right. you're telling me to pay an extra $80 right. for something that I'm supposed to have already. Right. So we're telling ASI, no, don't let them do that. So ASI tells them, don't do that. That's from asking to telling. And what a strike looks like is us forcing them to, to listen to us. Right. It goes from asking to telling to forcing. It goes, for, you know how Tupac said it, we all hungry, please let us eat. Right? Then it turns into, motherfuckers, we hungry, let us eat now. Right? Then it turns into, in picking the Lord, we coming in back. Right? So, to this flyer. We have many copies of this at the table, right under the Golden Eagle. And this is what we've done to introduce you to a little background about California students striking for human rights and social justice uh, across the state. It's been happening for decades. And uh, according to information we got off the web, strikes of uh, the recent strikes, one of the most notable was in 1968. And this strike was not done by university students. This was done by high school students. They had what was called the East uh, LA walkouts, so they called them the Chicago rollouts. And this is where students were standing up saying they were demanding equality in their education. They wanted to learn more about their history. And they were concerned about the disparate 
disproportionate numbers of Latino youth that were being killed in the Vietnam War. But there have been a whole series of strikes across the state by California students. Most of these are post-secondary, and students were striking for all different kinds of reasons, but they're related to social justice. We've been talking about a number of issues here, and one of the things we've been mentioning is this idea of education. And a lot of us feel that our education is really something that we're privileged to have. But I want you all to know, if you haven't heard it, that most of the world considers education to be a human right. So education is something that society should be providing to their citizens. And the reason it's important is because you need a good education in order to grow, in order to mature, in order to develop your full potential so you can go out into the world and get a good paying job and live a good life and help people around you. So the world recognizes that and in 1948, President Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, she co-wrote this thing called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and it's been ratified by almost every country in the entire world, and the U.S. ratified it, I believe, in 1950. So we understand that education is a right. Another thing I want to mention before I end is that uh, here in California, our system here, the California State University system and the UCs and the community colleges, these were developed by our governor, Jerry Brown's father. His name was Pat Brown. Pat Brown used to be the governor of the state. And in the end of the 1950s, he created this thing called the Master Plan. How many of you have heard of the Master Plan? I'm glad some of you have. That essentially established all these three systems to do three things. To provide quality education, to provide accessible education, and to provide essentially a free or very, very easily to be paid education. And it is no longer that way. It's going to take the average of us getting a VA degree six years to graduate from here. Our total cost, including housing, books, tuition, everything, will be close to $150,000. That is nowhere close to what lower income families can pay. So for all these reasons, we are advocating a strike. The strike's not only going to be taking place if we agree to do this collectively here, but all across California and actually all across the United States because students are working on all these issues. We're in contact with students all over the state. And these are really important things. These are things that in a just and democratic society, we should have our education. And so we want to encourage you to consider striking on May the 1st. Please get the information and read about it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming here. What's up, everybody? You know they messed up when they gave the dude that with the Afro pick, the mic, you know. <laughs> so uh, I've been out here most of the day for the teach out. And the thing that I didn't like was we didn't have a lot of people out there. But those that was courageous, those who felt like they wanted to make a difference, they got out here and they spoke their minds and they made a difference. And I want you all to commend yourselves because y'all out here doing the same thing. It means something. Whether it's a hundred of us or whether it's three of us, it means something. Now, the problem with this is why our friends, why our peers, why some of our professors don't want to get out of here, out here, is because of fear. They're afraid of the repercussions of exercising their constitutional rights as students and citizens of this nation. I could have sworn this was America. I could have sworn this was a democracy. I could have sworn this was a meritocracy. Well, it was, it's nominally that, you know, that's what we like to nominate ourselves at. It's a what? It's a plutocracy. A plutocracy. Thank you. Hey, I love it when my audience help me. If y'all got anything to shout out in the middle of this, just go ahead and let me know. But anyway, we need to detach ourselves from these chains. These chains that's keeping us locked down. These chains that's keeping us afraid of what we can accomplish as a people. The people before us didn't back down. The people before us didn't complain when they saw results. They bandaged up their dog bites. They washed the pepper spray out their eyes and they kept it pushing. We out here stepping because we make it nasty because professors ain't working with us. But so what? We got to do it. They are trying to keep us boxed in this system. They are trying to make professors not want to support us. They are trying to keep us in these classes when these, these days are coming. Isn't it real convenient, a real nice clinky dink how ain't none of administration here right now? Where are my $2,030 at? If I got to complain, I should have somebody to holler at. You feel me, Jelani? I've only been here one year. 
I'm a freshman, and I done watched as countless injustices have happened right before my eyes. I came here eager with the second chance after going through the Summer Bridge program to go to college. And here I am, watching my education be snatched away from me. For students like me that don't have no financial aid, when you tell me something about the student success beat, I'm thinking about getting a pitchfork and a torch and bringing an angry mob down the hallway. But I, that's, that's for another time right now. But anyway, it's making me very upset to see this. I can't afford fees as it is. And I'm pretty sure whoever with financial aid can't afford an extra $80. Cal State LA services about 25,000 students a year. Now times that times 80. Math majors, anybody? Anybody know what that add up to? Come on, come on, get 80, 80 times 25,000. That's a lot of money. Now, now, now when, we, when, when we had the teach out earlier, I gave the students a little multiple choice question. This is my question for you. This money, this humongous, ridiculous, small fortune of money is going to A, helping students with financial problems, B, making classes, C, administration advisement, or D, the appearance of the campus. Can I get an answer? C and D. Wait, no, it ain't no, it's one question. It's going to administration and advisement. Now, out of all the people you know who done dropped out of here, because we done seen people come and go. I shouldn't have seen this many people come and go my first year. I don't know about y'all. I don't like seeing my friends have to drop out and not make it. Six million dollars in one year in the pockets of advisement and administration. Now, like I was saying, who, how many of your friends do you know have dropped out because they wasn't, they, they felt administration and advisement wasn't helping them enough? What's the number one reason why students are dropping out? No classes. And what else? No money. No classes and no money. And, and, and I think the student success fee would have been a great idea if it was going to the students. Is it called administration success fee? Is it called advisement success fee? They put little guises, they put little vague surveys to trick you, to make you think that this is what you want. But it's not. It's been going on for too long. Have you ever had somebody trying to take something from you in your sleep? They come in your room real subtly, sneak in there. They knock something over. You start waking up, they pull back a little bit. But by the end of the night, they got your wallet. They got all your stuff. And you let them, because you were sleeping. Now I'm challenging every last one of you to wake up right now. Look, what I said earlier as well, this is the era of technology, this is the era of social media. Now I know when a party get cracking in the dorms or a five sig or whatever, we text it. It's a mass text. Hey, tonight at nine o'clock, be there. Thirsty Thursday, all that. But I want to ask you, how many of you actually sent a mass text out to your friends about this rally right now? And if you haven't done so, I challenge you to do so right now. Tell Chancellor Reed you care. Tell administration you care. I don't see no cell phones coming out. Can I, can I get some? Can I get some text popping? You think I'm playing? I'm dead serious. That's how you gonna get people out here. Tell them to come to the meetings. You're not into the beer meetings are on Tuesdays at what time? King Hall at 3.15 every day. You can be one of the organizers for events like this. You can, oh, King Hall D4050, thank you. Um, here, I'm gonna just let him announce that, and I, I'm gonna get the mic back. You know, y'all probably get tired of hearing me talking, but so what? Uh, and we, we we not only need everybody like Simeon up here, we need y'all up here too. So everybody, stick around for a minute. We're gonna have two more. We're gonna have two more quick little blurbs to put out there, and then we're gonna have an open mic, and we're gonna put it to the put it to the student body. Right when we're gonna have passing period, and we're gonna see all of these people that are walking by. We're gonna give them a chance to hear what y'all have to say to hear what we have to say, how we're going to stand up and fight back. Now, once again, sign up in front of that Golden Eagle if y'all want to be part of this organizing. So, so we've been talking about May Day this whole time. How many of you guys know who, what May Day is? How many of you have talked, I've, I've talked about it before, this is May Day, this is that. It's May 1st. 
This is an international working class uh, day of recognition of labor. This is something that, it's, that started in this country and it started after the fight for an eight hour work day. And it was done by, by primarily immigrant workers, by primarily people that have been in other places where work wasn't as exploited as it is here. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue that fight on May Day. It's happening all over the city. It's going to be done by groups that are actually going on strikes, such as the janitors, SCIU. The people, that are, the people that are going through it late at night and cleaning up all the businesses and the banks and all the rich offices and stuff like that, they're getting exploited and oppressed more than anybody in this system. So what are they going to do on May Day? They're going to try to strike. They have a strike vote coming up so that they can go out and they can go into the streets and make their voices heard. Now what's similar to that that we have on our campus? We have custodial workers on our campus that are contracted out, that haven't seen a raise in years, that haven't seen anything. And we had, it's up to us, it's up to the students who are here during the day when they're here at night cleaning our classrooms to stand up and make sure that their struggle is recognized as well. But not only the custodial workers, not only the staff here on campus, but also the faculty. We need to stand in solidarity with the faculty who don't have a contract right now. And not only do they not have a contract, but they didn't have one last fall when, they, when the faculty went on strike last fall. It was the first strike in the history of that union. And you know what? They still don't have a contract. And they're coming up on a strike vote right now. It's going to go from April 16th to the 23rd. And we want to know, and we want to show that the CSULA United to Defend Coalition is in full support and solidarity with a faculty yes for strike vote. But we're going to do more than that. We're going to do more than just let them know that we support them. What we're going to do is we're going to go on strike too. And we're going to do it first. And you know what? Everybody repeat after me. This is the slogan that we're going to carry into May Day that's going to support the faculty right now. We're going to say, students lead the way. We strike in May. 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 Everybody, come on on this campus. This is what we're doing, and we're gonna make it happen right now. We strike in May. Students lead the way. We strike in May. Students lead the way. We strike in May. Yeah. Let's go. Give it up. All right. You know how we're gonna do it? We're going to do it by organizing this campus. We're going to do it by mobilizing this campus. As we said before, we've exhausted our diplomatic means. We did the planet, we did the letters, we did the petitioning, we did the lobbying. What we're going to do is take it to the streets. We're going to strike and we're going to organize and do it. And if you guys, if anyone here wants to be part of that organizing, wants to be part of the mobilizing on campus, be part of history, take a stand for not only our campus and our community, but the future generations, our children. Everybody's going to know what we're doing on campus this year on May 1st, on May Day. So if you want to be part of that organizing, come to the meetings, King Hall, D4050 on Tuesdays, and show up and make your voice heard. This is a democratic space, and we're going to be fully representative of all the people on campus that want to fight. So I invite you to come there, make your voices heard, and continue what we're doing. Right now, because of what we did on March 1st, campuses all across LA, all across the state even, are looking to Cal State LA to see what we can do next while well, we're gonna push the struggle forward. So it's on us, it's on our responsibility to make it happen. So let's get out there, let's put our actions into words, I'm sorry, our words into actions, and we're gonna put our feet on the ground and fight. So all of you guys here right now at this rally, all next week and until May 1st, we need all of you guys to promote May Day. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, to pro promote May Day. Tell your friends, your aunties, your uncles, your sisters, all the professors, everybody that's involved, and anybody that's being oppressed in the system, which is damn near everybody. So all next week and the week after, you're going to see us. But we need y'all help, too. We need y'all to promote it, too. You know? I know you guys see us promote the April 12th event. We were out here, I gotta you know, go. passing out flyers, making signs. I think it's I have one. one. Us, but together, I just have the cop watching. Us, we're all on the same page doing this. Yeah, just I'm the cop. I'm sure things will change. <laughs> Are those cops? All of y'all.
Better go. I'll see you later. Bye. I'll be at our walk tonight. I gotta go to class. Maybe I'll maybe uh, I'll keep the stream going. We'll, we'll talk to some students. Uh, maybe on my way up to class we can get some interviews of. Uh, Cal State LA students um, and how the the budget cuts are are stressing us out. I don't know how late the the rally's gonna go. I just know I, I have to get up to my class. But after class, I'll be downtown uh, uh, streaming uh, Art Walk. So I'll see you there, officer.